Hi, my name is Ken Garris and I'm with acclaimedentertainment.com owned and operated by Occasions Music. I've been specializing in weddings since 1986, trained all of our DJs here for the last 27 years as well, and I do a lot of events. I know a lot about weddings and I'm here to share a little bit of knowledge with you. In this short video clip, I want to share with you some tips on your dollar dance. Are you going to have a money dance? That's the bridal dance. We call it the bridal dance at the reception because you don't want to advertise money, 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 come up and give us your money. But it is technically the dollar dance. You know, we call it the money dance. So if you're having a money dance at your reception, you'd want to do that later in the evening, usually around 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Don't get it out of the way first thing because you're going to have a lot of people go home right after the money dance. People think of going home. Let them dance and have a lot of fun before the money dance. If you're a younger bride or groom, you're going, to get, you're going to want some more festive music plays, have some fun, play some fun stuff. Have the money dance being a good trading point. If the money is important to you, you don't want to have the money dance too late. But on the other hand, you don't want to scare the older people away by, having, by playing all the good new nightclub music and the dance music prior to the money dance as well. So have it a little bit more traditional prior to the money dance. And once you have the money dance at about 8.30, 9 o'clock is the latest that I would go if your event's going to 11 o'clock at night. Because after the money dance, that's when the older people will go home and it's more of a party. All the traditional stuff's out of the way. This is how we recommend that you do it at acclaimedentertainment.com. Now, there's a lot of DJs that do things differently, and I've seen people actually start the night off with the money dance. Terrible mistake, terrible mistake. If dancing is important to you, you want to start the night off with a bang. There's another video that goes over how to get all, everybody up dancing right away. Make sure you watch that video. But the money dance should be later on in the evening, not, not real early. And uh, there are different types of money dances. The most calm are just slow songs. People just play slow love songs, the bride and groom get up there and you come up and you dance with them. Uh, the order for the, the line is the maid or matron of honor is the first person to dance with the bride. After her, you have, and she's the one that's going to collect the money, so she'll have the little basket there. After the maid or matron of honor, you're going to have the entire bridal party, and then after that, you will have all the honored guests following behind. Now, if you're playing slow songs for your dollar dance, then the parent dances do not have to be associated with the money dance. In other words, when the bride's going to dance with her father or the groom's going to dance with his mother, those are separate activities to be done earlier in the, in the evening. But around the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, there's a particular type of dollar dance called the Polish Bridal Dance. The Polish Bridal Dance is the one that's sung la 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 la. It's that song that you plays the whole way through the whole bridal party dance. So the money dance. We call it the bridal party dance. So if you have enough guests to dance with you for 30 minutes, that's the song that'll be in their head that whole time. That's called the Polish bridal dance. If you've never seen it at a wedding, it doesn't apply to you unless it's a part of the tradition that your, that your fiance has in their wedding reception. So discuss it with them. But if you're going to do the Polish bridal dance, then at, I told you everybody's going to dance. First is a maid of honor. After the maid of honor, because she's going to hold the money bag. After the maid of honor, you have all the honored guests. And at the end of the guests, you will have the parents. The four last people. Third and fourth last people will be the parents of the groom to dance with the bride. And the second to last person will be the father of the bride. And the very last person will be the mother of the bride. This only applies to the Polish bridal dance if you're going to follow it according to the tradition. So after you go through the Polish bridal dance, all the couples, all the people are going up dancing with the bride. Polish bridal dance is made for the bride. The groom shouldn't dance with the Polish bridal dance. I've seen it happen. You can do whatever you want to do if you want to do it, you know, but you'll be in the minority, but I've seen them dance to it. But the traditional way for the Polish bridal dance is people come up and they line up to dance with the bride. It's very festive. Some people shake those little uh, tissues. They really get everything going. You know, some families, it's a big tradition. If you have a tradition on your side of the family or your fiance side of the family of doing the Polish bridal dance and you try to do slow songs, your DJ is going to be bombarded with people. What are they doing? This isn't the money dance. What are they doing? What are they doing? People love that time with you to be able to dance with you and do that. And especially in the case of the Polish bridal dance, they look for that. So if you're doing the Polish bridal dance, make sure you do it correctly. The next to last person that will dance with the bride will be her father. So and whenever he gets up there, as soon as he starts getting close, everybody, the whole bridal party makes that big circle around the bride. Perhaps you've seen this. When the father comes up to dance with the bride, everything stops. Polish bridal dance goes off and then the, the bride's dance with her father will come on. Whether it's butterfly kisses, daddy's little girl, whatever it's going to be. They get that song and everybody's around them in one big circle. At the end of the daddy's little girl song, the mother comes in, the father leaves, and the Polish bridal dance song comes back on again. 
When that song comes back on, that's when everybody makes a tight circle around the bride. And they're dancing around, and that's when the groom is supposed to break through that circle to go in there to take the bride. Okay? If this is foreign to you and you're thinking, what the heck is he talking about? It doesn't apply to you. You're watching the wrong video. <laughs> There's a lot of other tips. But a lot of people call us asking us about that Polish bridal dance. Do we have the song? People even call me and say, what's the name of that Polish bridal dance? I go, it's called the Polish bridal dance. So we have a version of the song that's one hour and 15 minutes long. So if you get a professional DJ, he'll have a long version of the song. You don't want to hire a DJ that's going to, well, start it over again now. You know, you want to have it seamless to play the whole way through. Things move along a lot faster, too. I actually like it, as opposed to doing weddings that play the slow songs, because it's nice and festive, moves along pretty quick. Oh, by the way, after the bride's dance with her father, when the mother comes in, that's when everybody gets around that big circle. The Polish bridal dance comes back on, and the groom's supposed to break through the circle to get the bride. Have you seen that? He breaks through, he picks her up, and that's when, according to tradition, they left for the night, okay? Well now, most of the bride and grooms are paying for the weddings themselves. You're paying for the party, you wanna to stay to enjoy it. So sometimes people pretend to leave the reception, but regardless of how you look at it, after the money dance, that's when it's pretty much a party. All the traditional stuff, if you were doing line dances and stuff like that, the activities are all out of the way. The money dance traditionally should be the last activity of the event. After the money dance, it should just be a party the rest of the night. Well, hope you like this. If you have any questions about dollar dances in general, the different styles, post them on our Facebook page. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Or you can shoot me an email um, over at information at acclaimedentertainment.com. Otherwise, uh, watch the rest of the videos and learn as much as you can and enjoy the process of planning for your wedding because it goes fast.